So I was recently catching up on the latest season of Bob's Burgers and was pretty amazed to realize that the show just hit its 200th episode. 200 episodes for any series is absolutely incredible, especially because when released, Bob's Burgers was not particularly well received. Fortunately, it found its audience and has since delivered a remarkably consistent 10 year run while sporting characters unlike any in the Fox animation lineup. In fact, that might be the thing I love most about it. These characters and their relationships feel incredibly unique compared to other Fox juggernauts, The Simpsons and The Family Guy, and even American Dad, which has since moved to TBS. And as luck would have it, the 200th episode perfectly encapsulates exactly what I love most about Bob's Burgers, and that is the Belcher family itself. So let's take a little deep dive into why I believe that the Belchers are truly the most loving and wholesome family on television. So this is my very first Bob's Burgers video, but if you're new to the channel, I'd love it if you poked around and considered subscribing. I do a lot of cartoon analysis for series like BoJack Horseman, King of the Hill, Futurama, and you know, I'll probably do more Bob's Burgers moving forward too. If any of that suits your fancy, I'd really appreciate your support. Thanks. Heads up, if you're behind on Bob's Burgers, this video is going to spoil various episodes pretty much up to the 200th episode, so spoilers ahead. The 200th episode is titled Bob Belcher and the Horrible No Good Very Bad Kids, and starts with the Belchers prepping for the Ocean Avenue Business Association Ocean Fest. <laughs> Gotta say the whole title. Ocean Avenue Business Association Ocean Fest! Oh, I can't wait! We also learn there's a sculpture contest that the businesses can enter and they can potentially win. A $300 gift certificate to any store in the street! The kids really want to win the contest so they can drop the $300 at a toy shop, but unfortunately, Linda already built their sculpture and, well... It's a mermaid who loves beef! The night before Ocean Fest, a fire breaks out in the restaurant kitchen, which breaks the grill and risks them not being able to open during Ocean Fest, which would be a huge loss for Bob's already struggling business. This is where the episode starts to showcase exactly why I love the Belcher family so much. I think I might know what started the fire. What? What, honey? Me. Despite there being no evidence to link Gene to the fire, he fully admits the mistake he made. He knows he messed up, and he feels bad, and he owns up to it. He reveals that he used a hair crimper on a wig to spice up the sculpture so they could win the gift certificate, but forgot to unplug the crimper. But it doesn't stop there. Even though Gene already fully owned up to starting the fire, Louise chimes in as well. Gene actually kind of got me thinking about something. Yeah, honey, why? Just that I, um, also might have started the fire. Louise easily could have stayed quiet, but she did the right thing and admitted her mistake. And she's not the only one. I, um, kind of need to tell you guys something too. Tina, no! Yeah. No! Uh -huh. I think a lot of kids in this situation would have kept quiet and been afraid of the consequences, but all three Belcher children, even with plausible deniability, owned up to their massive blunder. And I think this is incredibly representative of the Belchers and why they're such a great family. Even though they all have their quirks and often take those quirks too far, they are never malicious or have malintent. They love and care for each other so much that they could never lie to each other about something like this. And I think Bob's response to learning this information is perfectly representative of why he's a great father and why they were willing to come forward about their mistake. What's wrong with all of you? Nope, I didn't mean that. It's okay. Oh, oh, thanks, Tina, for telling us. Yes, he gets upset, but he knows and understands that it was just a mistake. A big mistake, yes, but an honest-to-God mistake. He actually thanks them for telling them the truth. In fact, we can actually directly compare how the Belcher kids reacted in this situation to another Fox animated family, The Simpsons. In Season 9's The Miracle on Evergreen Terrace, Bart wakes up early on Christmas morning and accidentally sets fire to all of the family's presents. He subsequently hides the evidence, and rather than tell the truth, Truth, makes up a story about seeing a robber that stole their entire Christmas haul. Um, oh, uh, he was wearing a striped convict shirt, and he was carrying a big sack with a dollar sign on it. <laughs> Classic burglar. Because of their quote-unquote bad luck, the town comes together and gifts the family with tons of stuff to make up for their stolen Christmas, and eventually, when the truth is unraveled, the town comes down hard on the family. Now, I love the Simpsons family, but let's compare Homer to Bob. How does Homer react when Bart typically makes a mistake? You did this to me! Ah! Are you little... Are you little? <laughs> sure, Bart is a troublemaker, but Homer's reactions of over-the-top anger clearly don't help. Bart was afraid to tell his parents the truth, and it got the family into deeper trouble, but not the Belchers. When these kids make these kinds of mistakes, they do everything they can to make up for it. And the rest of the episode showcases exactly this. When Bob wants the kids to pass out Ocean Fest flyers, they actually go on a mission to find Bob a thermocouple to fix the grill in time for the lunch rush. And that's a really common thing we see from all of the Belchers and Bob's Burgers. When they make a mistake and hurt a family member, they go far out of their way to try and make up for it. The kids finally track down a thermocouple at a restaurant called Shrimple Plan that hasn't opened yet, and the kids consider breaking into the restaurant to borrow the thermocouple, but we've already established what good kids the Belchers are by now, so I'm sure you know how this went. Hang on! 
I'm getting warmed up. Damn it! I just don't think I can do it. Not only did they not break the window, they left a note apologizing and explaining the situation. We set our restaurant on fire and ruined his grill. He's a great dad and a great cook. Sometimes he smells weird. This was just a really sweet moment. Tina wrote this without even realizing her dad would hear it, and that's because it's genuine and from the heart. These kids just love their family. Thanks to this note, the owner of a Shrimple Plan lends Bob her thermocouple, and they're able to open up for the lunch rush. So like I said, the way this family loves and supports each other, even through their mistakes, is exactly why I love them. They are seriously one of the most supportive and loving families in all of television, especially when you compare them to some of the other Fox animated families. <laughs> There are so many examples of this family dynamic throughout the entirety of Bob's Burgers. One of my favorite episodes is The Hauntening, a great Halloween episode where Louise laments the fact that she is seemingly incapable of being scared, which kind of makes her lose her passion for the holiday. To help reignite that passion, the entire family coordinates an elaborate haunted house. They trick Louise into thinking it's a regular lame haunted house before it all devolves into a seriously scary situation. It's probably my favorite Halloween episode in the series. Louise remains pretty calm throughout the experience, but in the end, they actually scare her. We love you, baby. Hope you liked it. Liked it? It was freaking incredible! I'm still shaking! The lengths the family goes for one another is so refreshing, especially when some of the most popular animated series showcase a pretty contentious family dynamic. Relax, Jerry. We'll be in and out in a minute. Then you can get right back to your dumb vacation with a family that doesn't need you. In the episode Fluise, Louise is very happy to have the flu since it means she gets to stay home from school. But while she's sick, Linda accidentally drops her Koopy Kochi nightlight in the toilet, and then Bob accidentally melts it trying to evaporate the water in the oven. This is Louise's favorite toy, and she's honestly the family member who is most likely to hold a grudge. Louise then has a fever dream in which her family is stopping her and Koopy Kochi from getting to a fortress, though her family are all inhabiting the body of her toy friends. I cannot remember all of their names. I'm just gonna call them all Hello Kitty. But this dream seems to represent Louise's subconscious issues with her family members for trying to force feed her medicine and ruining her favorite toy. They're stopping her from what she wants most, to be sick and hang with Koopy Kochi. But throughout the dream, she comes to the conclusion that she needs to forgive them because family is more important. And while she's having this dream, Bob goes goes far out of his way to track down a replacement Koopy Koji for Louise, even listening to a toy store owner read an entire book about the character. Also, I could just read them at home myself. You won't do the voices right. Sit down. The coolest thing about this episode is that both Louise and Bob did the right thing completely separate from one another. Louise didn't forgive Bob just because he replaced her toy. She did it because she loves her family. And Bob spent his entire night getting a new Koopy Koji even after Louise had fallen asleep. Another one I loved was Are You There, Bob? It's Me Birthday, in which Linda and the kids completely forget Bob's birthday. I mean, if you want to see how much Linda cares about Bob, just look at her realizing she forgot. I forgot your father's birthday! No, no! Why? Why, God, no! An entire day later, they scramble to give Bob a surprise party and make it seem like they never forgot. The party doesn't come together, but in the end, they fall back on what they know about Bob and give him the perfect night in. And Bob reacts exactly as you'd expect. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Bob wasn't upset that the kids or Linda forgot his birthday in the first place. He knew if they forgot, it was just a mistake. He's not insecure about his family's love. And in the end, even a quick last ditch birthday gift for Bob ended up being exactly what he needed. The episode The Ring But Not Scary is another that showcases the lengths the family would go for one another. Jean accidentally loses Linda's anniversary present at the water park, an engagement ring that Bob got for her. The kids literally coordinate a full water park search party after dark to find the ring and make it up to their mom and dad. I love the ludicrous situations this family gets into, but they're never phased if it means doing right by each other. In the end, they don't even find the ring, but Bob and Linda aren't upset, they just make the best of the situation and have a nice evening at the water park. Honestly, I could keep giving examples for hours because this is the dynamic the show is built on. The Belchers are just a wholesome family. The conflicts in this show are almost never centered on malicious intent or deep personal conflict. It's all about a goofy, quirky, over-the-top family making goofy, quirky, over-the-top mistakes and then doing their damnedest to make up for those mistakes. And all along the way, they never stop supporting or caring for each other, even when those mistakes are massive, like setting the restaurant on fire. And 11 seasons deep, the show has never abandoned that dynamic. Where series like Family Guy have completely evolved the entire family relationship over the years, Bob's has always stayed true to these characters and their love for one another. It's probably the thing I love most about Bob's Burgers, and I hope they continue to showcase this wholesome, loving family for another 200 episodes. Family, so 
Lynn, nice. careful, we're on a roof. Folks, thanks for tuning into my first Bob's Burgers video. Do me a favor and let me know if you want to hear more about Bob's Burgers. It's a show I really love and I think character deep dives could be fun. Do all that commenting and liking stuff and stay tuned for more. Peace. Johnny! Two challenge!